You know the house inside and out. This is the front door depicting the glass doors uh, through which you can see into the house. Uh, the front uh, foyer area showing both the upstairs uh, banister as well as looking straight through the house, which would to the right be the kitchen, uh, and then going straight to the backyard. Uh, the stairs here to the left where uh, the security personnel would often leave gifts and things from the fans prior to Michael retiring to his bedroom uh, to meet up with Conrad Murray. You know, the bedroom uh, where Michael Jackson met his demise. You know, the walk-in large bedroom-sized closet adjacent to the bedroom. The restroom where you see Michael Jackson's uh, orange-lined bomber jacket that he was wearing when he performed Earth Song just 12 hours earlier, or rather when he discarded on the bathroom floor probably just an hour or so earlier. His pants bundled up in a ball on the floor uh, from coming home from rehearsal, showering, and uh, proceeding to be given drugs by Conrad Murray. So what is Conrad Murray's version of events? We know what his version of events was on June 25, 2009. We know that from the paramedics and the UCLA personnel. Michael was dehydrated, he was tired, and he gave him lorazepam to help him sleep. And he witnessed the arrest. That's a medical term. What that means is you observe the person go down. Dr. Cooper talked about that. Other doctors talked about it. A witnessed arrest means just that. You witnessed the arrest. Well, that's Conrad Murray's version of June 25th. But, of course, that version changed. Conrad Murray, uh, from June 25th to June 27th, uh, during that time, the police did not have contact with him. I think his attorneys say in the, in, in the interview that they had instructed him not to return calls or something of that nature. You have the, the transcript and the recording. Uh, but an arrangement was made. Um, I believe an attorney of Conrad Murray had called and an arrangement was made to interview the defendant on June 27, 2009 at the Ritz-Carlton Hotel in Marina del Rey. And you know from the recording and from the transcript that Conrad Murray was there, represented by his attorneys, Mr. Pena and Mr. Chernoff, that Detective Smith and Detective Martinez were there, and of course the defendant, Conrad Murray, was there. And at this stage of the investigation, the police knew very little. They did not have uh, autopsy findings. They did not have toxicology findings. And as you know, the cause of death was not discovered until the toxicology findings were completed and disclosed. What they did know on June 25th is there was no sign of trauma, there was no obvious wounds, uh, nothing to indicate any type of violent death by the hand of another. So they were essentially working in the dark. They were trying to gather information, they were awaiting toxicology reports, they were awaiting findings by the autopsy, uh, by the coroner's office, and they sat down to listen to Conrad Murray, to listen to what he had to say in the presence of both his lawyers. The detectives were not medically sophisticated. They did not know the terminology. They probably didn't know the proper follow-up questions. They sat, they listened, they asked questions, and they recorded what Conrad Murray chose to tell them on that day. And what we learn is that he was his personal, the personal physician to Michael Jackson, who was going to be going on the tour, uh, that the recent care and treatment had began a little over two months prior to Michael Jackson's death, that he spent the night at Michael Jackson's house at least six nights a week, and that his purpose was to put Michael Jackson to sleep. The detectives ask, when they learn about these nightly doses of propofol, how frequently were these taking place? And Conrad Murray says, in response to the question, more than 10 times? Yes. More than 20 times? 30 days a month, roughly, every day. Those are Conrad Murray's words. 
He describes that he would give a bolus dose followed by a drip. He describes when he says that on June 25th he gave only 25 milligrams, that he typically gave more, but he gave half of that because of all the benzodiazepines on board. So he describes giving 50 milligram bolus doses followed by a drip in all the nights preceding. But for the night Michael died, and evidently just the night before, or maybe two nights before. But again, you have to evaluate Conrad Murray's statement in light of all the evidence as to what weight you give and how much truthfulness you find in these statements. But this is what Conrad Murray told the police on June 27. Bolus doses followed by a drip. And then he describes a chronology of events of that very night. The IV in the leg to hydrate. The 10 milligram Valium pill sometime after 1 a.m., an oral pill. Said it was slow to act and Jackson needed to sleep. 2 a.m. he gives lorazepam, again, according to Conrad Murray. This is intravenous lorazepam. According to Conrad Murray, Jackson remained awake for at least an hour until 3 a.m. when for some reason Conrad Murray switches to midazolam. Again, two milligrams given intravenously. The only time Conrad Murray claims Michael slept was this about 12 minutes after the 3 a.m. midazolam injection. During this whole entire evening, according to Conrad Murray, this is the only time Michael Jackson slept for about 12 minutes following the 3 a.m. midazolam injection. But at 3.20, he's awake, and he describes this continuing until 4.30 a.m. So I was awake. It was 4.30 in the morning, and he was wide awake, and then he complained. I got to sleep, Dr. Conrad. I have these rehearsals to perform. I must be ready for the show in England. Tomorrow I will have to cancel my, my performance. I have to cancel my trip because, you know, I cannot function if I don't get the sleep. So this is at 4.30 a.m. And Conrad Murray is saying that Michael's complaining. He's complaining that he can't sleep. He needs to sleep or he'll have to cancel. Michael is complaining. Those are Conrad Murray's words at 4.30 in the morning. So according to Conrad Murray, at 5 a.m., he gives 2 milligrams of lorazepam. At 7.30 a.m., he gives another two milligrams of midazolam. And again, as you go through the statement of Conrad Murray, Michael's still complaining. He's awake. Conrad Murray keeps saying he's complaining, that he cannot sleep, and that at 7.30 a.m. there's still no effect. <laughs> Pieces together as you go through the evidence with Dr. White uh, hypothesizing that at 7 a.m. Michael Jackson swallowed uh, potentially 16 milligrams of lorazepam. Set is, setting aside the fact that there's no science to discern whether Conrad Murray gave oral lorazepam pills or Michael Jackson swallowed them himself, uh, setting aside that absolute complete speculation, uh, if you accepted Dr. White's theory, uh, at 7 a.m. Michael Jackson had just taken uh, 16 milligrams of lorazepam at 7.30 a.m., there's still no effect, and as you go through Conrad Murray's statement, there's no effect throughout. At 10 a.m., Jackson requests propofol. 